Hello and welcome back everyone. Sorry for the delay of this episode, but life was busy. But now I'm back with a new checklist for today. I've been using Nixos pretty much daily and it worked flawlessly. So grab a drink, sit back and don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments. So the first thing on today's checklist is to improve my microphone sound. For that I had, as one does, we looked it up on the Nix Packages website. That's how I install it, just easy effects. I added a few things, just a compressor, speech processor, noise reduction, equalizer, de-essers. Okay, we did the first thing, which is the audio panel. I didn't do a lot there, I was, I was too lazy to actually figure out what kind of equalizer and compressor and so on and so on I want. So I just installed it and I'm gonna leave it like that for now. So we did that. So next is setting up Kitty. I already have Kitty installed. I saw that you can do kitten themes. There are a ton of themes. Vivid Punk with Orange. I do like that. And after the restart, we have Vivid Punk with Orange. I, I kind of do like this. Next, we have to configure Kitty. So my first step normally is to just go on a website and see. You can open a config file by pressing Ctrl Shift F2. So Ctrl Shift F5 does reload Kitty, yes. Where is the setting Ctrl Shift F2 that opens this in Nano? You can include the secondary config file via the include directives. If you use a relative path, include blah 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 blah. So first, I need some fonts to install. So I looked it up a little. I have some fonts that I need for DaVinci for video editing and some nerd fonts. I have the Droid Sans Mono just as default, the symbols. Alright, this is it. I'm finished with the kitty conf. I went through all the, I don't know, it felt like thousands of lines. I'm not sure how many it was. And I won't look at them again. I just, just deleted everything that I don't think that I will need. And I think I'm done. So I have my Humid Nerd font mono, the different bulks. I have the font size on 30, just because it's easier for you to read if I, had, if I have it big. No idea what this is. I just left it in. Uh, Cursor Trail, I kind of like it. I think a lot of people will hate it that this thing jumps around like this. But I'm into it. URLs, just some URL highlighting. Then this is, I think, uh, just this is about trailing spaces. I think it does delete them. I'm not sure, I can't remember. And the bell, I just enabled it. I rarely use tabs. I try not to use tabs, I try to use panes. Then the window itself just different border settings you can see that better when I open another one you see the border the orange one the thickness of it that's mostly just window settings also if we look at the tab bar I'm just gonna open a new tab now you can see the, the name is down there the fade is the little boxes on the side that just fade away and they are in the center because I don't like tabs in general so I can better see them so I can see them a little bit better then the background blur, I have a little bit of opacity in there. I'm still figuring that one out. Then some clipboard stuff. And the theme that I have is called Vivid Punk. I might make one myself at some point. Okay, next I want to install or to try out Seashell. I heard a lot about it. I have no idea how it works or what it is, but let's just enable it. You can just do programs that Seashell will enable. We have this module there. All right, and we still have to enable the shell. So as default shell for my user called Luix, I want to enable packages.cshell. <laughs> I don't know how I can tell the difference. Is that the correct one? I'm not sure if shell is enough. Shell default user shell is also a thing that I apparently can add somewhere. Users to users to default shell does not exist. Oh, I might have to reboot. Okay, see you soon. Oh, and we're back. So, Kitty. Oh, that looks like Seashell. This is the Seashell configuration function for new users. 
seashell new user install. You're seeing this magic because you have no seashell startup files. Seashell env, C profile, seashell rc, c login. Blah blah blah. Quit and do nothing. Continue to the main menu. Saving new settings, they will take effect immediately. Oh, we are. Alright, and what do we have here? Shell, seashell. This already looks nicer. It doesn't just spam it in. If you saw before, when I spam tab, it always gave me a new list. And now I can just go through. I'm not sure if I fully grasp what just happened. I just had Vim commands inside the command line. So if I press ESC and press zero, dollar, zero, dollar, zero, oh. oh. Okay, when I just tap around, it just flies over there. Oh, that's so good. I'm just thinking about adding all these things into GNU Stow. So I can just symlink them and version them. Is it smart to version your history? That's that's a bit of the question. Because theoretically my history would be on Git. I, I just read that it's easier to just move them over seashell in the home. Just to make sure if anything works. The next thing that I wanted to stylize is this part and maybe see something else. For that, I'm just googling seashell configuration and looking at images. So I've been scrolling through the oh my seashell wiki and I don't see the difference in each image. Clean this line. This one is green. This one, this one looks nice. This little arrow. I don't like the percent sign here. Oh, <laughs> there's too many. Oh god, where did I get into here? It's crazy. I think I will do it by myself. So here are a few of the configuration things in here that we did earlier. things and I just set something up for myself it doesn't look too bad the folders are a little too dark for the background I think after all that I'm gonna install some let's read what this is again oh my seashell is a delightful open source community dream framework for managing your seashell configuration it comes bundled with a thousand helpful functions helpers plugins themes and a few things that make you shout Oh my seashell. That sounds fun. Oh my seashell. There it is. There's even an option for it. That's crazy. Oh my seashell. Let's quickly enable that. Apparently, I think I have to do... Okay. We are enabling it again here. Okay. I have no idea what I'm reading here. But it seems to be important. I don't want a plugin overview, I just want to know how to use it. I can select the plugins manually. I disabled it up here, but enabled it here again. With all my seashell enabled with some plugins, I still have to figure out how I can use more plugins. Okay, I just looked up the all my seashell module from Nix and apparently it's really just enable plugins git python man and other things my problem is i have no idea which themes or plugins that i should use so i'm just gonna scroll until i find a theme that i like and when i have a theme i will look at the plugins at the endless long list of plugins this looks a lot like my old configuration did you use seashell no actually there's the date. Okay. <laughs> this looks a lot like my old configuration. I think I have a theme in Seashell, but I'm not so sure. I think I have Git. Also not so sure. This seems to me like a really normal Git design. Very orange because of my other theme, the Vivid Punk. I cannot be bothered with reading all this. 
Thank you for watching today's episode. Leave some tips and suggestions for the next video. Either I could do Home Manager or I could do Wayland. Those are the two options that I currently have in mind. Hope to see you soon.